I said the power and importance in the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, the blood is throughout scripture. But what does Christ's blood mean to us? The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. We say it every day, we bleed it. As a matter of fact, in times of emergency, everybody will be pleading, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. But the question is, do we know what we are pleading and what we are expecting? Let, let this help us to understand. Joshua chapter 2, verse 18 to 19, as I begin to open it up. Joshua chapter 2, verse 18 to 19. As far back, as far back as we can remember, there is power in the blood. The scarlet, the scarlet cloth, the scarlet garment. The Bible said, unless when we come into the land, you bind this line of scarlet cloth in the window through which you let us down. And unless you bring your father, your mother, your brothers, and all your father's household to your own Home. Somebody say, unless, unless, as far back as the time of Joshua, the blood became a symbol of preservation. Unless you identify with the blood, heaven does not have any, you can't hold God responsible for not saving you or protecting you. Verse 19, unless... So it shall be that whosoever goes outside the door of your house into the street, his blood shall be on his own head and will be guiltless. Whoever is with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head if a hand is laid on him. If a hand is what laid on him. So as long as you stay under the cover of blood, heaven has a commitment to keep you protected and preserved. Can I hear you? Amen, somebody. In the name of Jesus Christ. The blood has immunity. Hear me. Rahab, the woman spoken to in this passage, was a harlot in the city of Jericho. And as the Israelite came to possess the land, her city was destined for destruction. And she along with it. But she was delivered and her life transformed simply by tying a scarlet cord on her window. Now this cord represented the blood of our Lord Jesus. And it pointed towards the lamp that takes away the sins of the world. In fact, if you look at all records of the blood today, you will find that, that wherever the blood is released, there is miracles, there is what signs, and there is wonders. Let's look at the prophecy of the blood of Jesus. Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. Now from the beginning of human history, it is revealed when Adam and Eve sinned, God shed innocent blood on the altar to make clothes for them. And that was from animal skin. Did you see that? Also for Adam and Eve, the Lord made tonics of skin and clothes for them. But blood had to be shed for that to be possible from Genesis as far back as then. So this is the picture of the covering of righteousness that we receive when our Lord Jesus is brought in focus of the finished work and the power of the blood in the name of Jesus. Again, let's look at Hebrew chapter 9 verse 22. So instinctively, as many of us today who wants to worship God have this in mind that when it was demanded that an offering, a sacrifice should be brought to the altar, Cain and Abel, they brought their sacrifice, but watch. Abel had already learned that God demanded blood. So he brought a lamb and God accepted the blood of Abel's lamb. But he did not accept Cain's offering. Why? Because without what? The shedding of blood, there's no remission of what sin. So God was as far back as in the story of Cain and Abel telling us that your sacrifice must have a what? A touch of blood in it. Because the Bible said, according to the law, almost everything is purified by the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Then let's look at the covenant with Abraham. From the book of Genesis chapter 22, verse 22, God now told Abraham again to sacrifice his long-awaited son, Isaac. 
God told Abraham to sacrifice his long-awaited son, Isaac. So just before, but the story is in Genesis chapter 22. Media, you can get the right scripture. So just before Abraham plunged the dagger into the quivering heart of his son, an angel stopped him. And Abraham saw what? A ram caught in the ticket. And Isaac was set free. But an innocent animal's blood was shed in an exchange. And so today, you can see a continuous build-up of covenant that God has had with men through what? Sacrifice and the blood. So then God wanted to deliver his people from bondage in the land of Egypt again. So on the night of the Passover, God again instructed each house to slay a lamb. Each house was to slay a lamb. And they put the blood on their door. And God said in Exodus chapter 12 verse 13, when I see the blood, I will do what? I will pass you by. So there again we see another covenant entered with the children of Israel with the blood. And in the tabernacle, if you begin to study the tabernacle of Moses, you will see the altar where there was continuous shedding of what? Blood. Up until even the tabernacle and the altar that was built by who? Solomon. And that tells us, you remember Solomon, the man that sacrificed 144,000 what? Animals. After he did the first 1,000, God showed up. He went ahead and did what? released 144 animals. Can you imagine what it means to kill 1,000 animals, 2,000 animals? See, this man so disturbed God. You know, the first time 1,000, ah, Solomon said, God, visit me. This time I'm not going to stop until you come. So he began to shed, shed, shed. 5,000, God did not show. He said, no, go to other cities, every cow, every lamb, we are going to keep what until he shows up. What does that tell us? That blood disturbs the spirit world. Blood disturbs the spirit world. When blood is saturated, heaven cannot be quiet. Blood disturbs the spirit world. And that's why you see so many things going on today because of these mysteries. Thank God for Jesus. Somebody say, thank God for Jesus. And then finally, our Lord Jesus Christ died upon the cross. His death was a fulfillment of all the prophecy and all the promises. And this is actually the reason for Easter. If you don't understand that, people start disturbing themselves again and being troubled of what they can do and what they cannot do. Let's look at what you should be troubled about today. Revelation chapter 13 verse 8. What should trouble you today? What should trouble you is when you don't understand what God is doing and what God is saying and what is in the heart of God. And I believe God you shall understand in the name of Jesus. And the Bible said, Revelation chapter 13 verse 8. All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose name have not been written in the book of life of the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. He has been slain. Jesus has been slain from the foundation of what? The world. So he was not just slain on that Good Friday. Before Good Friday, God who knows the end from the beginning, who has ordained all things, who knows and whose plan has been in place. Even before the earth was created, he had a plan of redemption. Even before Adam sinned, and before Eve, before he sent them away, before Cain killed the brother Eber, before Genesis chapter 6 verse 6, God regretted what? The creation of man. Before the iniquity of man was overflowing. Before the covenant of Noah with the flood failed. Before the Abrahamic covenant came into place. Before the judges, one after the other, failed. Before the kings, one after the other, struggled. God was just waiting for one thing, the throne of David to be established. And for the fullness of time to come. For the accomplishment and the fulfillment of divine plan and purpose. The blood that was shed is not an accident. How do I know? If you go to the book of Genesis chapter 12, you will see that when Abraham was coming back from the battle, when Melchizedek came, and I am convinced because I know by revelation today that he represents, because the Bible said the priesthood that is forever, and there's no other priesthood that is forever, if not Christ. But by then the Bible said no father and no mother. 
because he had not come in flesh. What he gave to Abraham was what? The blood and what? The bread. He had already brought him into a covenant of that which was to come. And so the Bible said it was accounted unto him for what? Righteousness. And so Abraham paid a tithe on behalf of who? Abraham, Isaac and who? Jacob. And connected who? David. And that genealogy to that blood. It was paid ahead of time. So the Levites and that priesthood was established by that offering that was offered long before time. So all who dwell on the earth will worship him whose name have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb. And slain from what? Note, what is important there is foundation. Book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So it's not like it is this Easter. No, he has been slain. Jesus has been what? from the foundation of from before we began to say in the beginning God created what he, he was already slain he was already that's what that scripture is saying to us therefore today thank you Holy Spirit I, I, I sense a strong light here and many of us understanding what we are doing is remembrance what we are doing is what remembrance therefore proclaims today what does this Revelation 13, 8 do? It proclaims that he was slain before the foundation of the world, meaning he came to die. He came to, Jesus came to die. He planned to die. He lived to die. And he was born to die. I repeat. If we understand our life as Christian, know this. Before the foundation of earth, even as you got born again, every cry, every child of God must connect with this. Jesus came to die. He planned to die. Why he lived his life? He lived his life to die. Why was he born? He was born to die. He came to die. Planned it. And lived it. And then finally... He understood why he was born and he fulfilled it. Why are you here, you child of God? What is your purpose? And he told us, now deny yourself, carry your cross, and do what? Paul said, I die daily. And any Christian, any child of God who understands that we have been called to die daily, you will never be confused by the message that you hear in this generation. The things happening around you will not move you. You will continue to stay very close to the cross. You continue to stay very close to these truths. As we have seen, the blood of Jesus throughout the scripture has been consistent and is still consistent today. Hallelujah, somebody. I'm about to have us to share the power in the blood of Jesus. Even as I'm speaking, the power of God is all over here now. There is nothing that is here today that is hidden from the blood. No foundation, no problem, no difficulty, no challenge. Please don't come and say, woman of God, help me. Look for cancer, heal you. Look, man can't give you nothing. If you follow the teaching that is coming your way, and you follow the power, every situation, every circumstance, is changing right now in Jesus name as you receive this word everything that is concerning your life automatically is affected for good oh, Obara ne mema Obara Jesus onyoma Obuya ne mema The Lord is here to do good for you Obara ne mema To do good for your children Obara ne mema To do good for your household receive Obara Jesus onyoma Oh, 
First Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one, from verse eighteen to nineteen. First Peter chapter one. There's already miracle all over this auditorium, and if you are online, there's already miracle. Whether you are standing behind your car, you are going to work, you are in the office, you are in your bedroom, there's miracle everywhere that this word, this message is being received right now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, or from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, verse 19, know this today but with the precious blood of jesus as of a lamb without blemish and without spot verse 20 the bible said he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was made manifest in these last times to us know today that every one of us has been and were redeemed by what by the blood by the blood by the blood by the blood therefore know today Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 that his blood brings us into fellowship his blood brings us into fellowship Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 I will be sharing with us 30 things that the blood of Jesus we do can do and has been doing in your life 30 good things 30 good things he said but now in Christ Jesus you who was once far off, have been brought near by what? The blood. So the blood of Jesus is what brings us near to what? Fellowship. Without the blood, you cannot gain entrance. You can't be near in fellowship. Colossians 1.20. The blood is what brings peace. The blood of Jesus brings peace. Colossians 1.20. And um, if you have this in mind, then we are going to start looking at the 30 things the blood of Jesus does. This is one of my most uh, powerful verse, and I consider it to be one of my most effective scriptures. Whenever I remember this scripture, Colossians 1.20 said, and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of what? His cross. So every time there's a need to reconcile or to bring peace, once the blood of Jesus is introduced, especially if you understand what the courtroom of heaven looks like. Okay, let me just touch that a bit before I get into 30 things the blood can do so that we can begin to see the reality of what happens to us every day. You know, the blood of Jesus is like an evidence. Somebody say evidence. Because you see, you cannot collect evidence except if there was a crime. Praise God. You collect evidence from what? A crime scene. Something happened. Now, that result is what a judge will wait for to decide a case. Now, there must have been a release of this blood as a proof that there is an innocent blood for humanity to be set free. Now, the devil knows that, but sometimes, because he's a liar and he's full of deception, so he will deny and act like he doesn't know. Just in case, if you don't know you are right, then he can take advantage of you. As we're here, there is a courtroom that is set up daily. This is before we die. For every circumstance and everything going on in humanity, there is a courtroom and there is a mobile courtroom. This mobile courtroom constantly and daily supervises the activities of men. This is where case files are submitted. And the essence of this case file is to determine who will come back and who will be taken. Is somebody following me? If you understand that many of us have been close to death experiences, but somehow through the case files and the vindication were released. Can I hear your amen? Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, Jesus Christ, thank you so much. Father, I'm so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I remember about 21 years ago, I was traveling on my way to Port Harcourt. I was involved in this terrible, ghastly accident with four of my workers. I remember it was like yesterday I traveled. But I know they picked us up and they were transferring us to bring us to orthopedic. There's something I remember coming back to my body. 
it was like a journey I started. I was, I just remember that I came back. Thank you, Jesus. I remember I was speaking in tongues because one of my workers was left who they thought was dead. But by the time we got to hospital, he was alive and they brought him to join us. All I remember is I was speaking in tongues even though I was not very conscious. It was not a simple accident. It was something beyond what I can understand. But I want to believe that because of the activities around my life that period, the courtroom that was set up, purpose will not allow them to take my life. Do you know that your assignment and your purpose is the reason why death will be suspended? On another, on another event, this happened about 14 years ago, a woman had issue with her husband and I went to go and help out. So when I went and I was, they were um, fighting with the children and there was so much going on. So I was a young Christian and I didn't know that there's power in my tongue. So I said, before this will happen, it's over my dead body. As soon as I said that, one of the mad people that were in the fight, just, you know, this, then I used to do with one. So this uh, attachment, somebody just held my hair like that, as if this fight must finish today. They were bent on doing something very bad. I don't want to get into the details, but they were bent on dealing with the woman. And I, I went to defend something. That's why sometimes when you go to, to, to enter fight, it's a dangerous thing. I remember as they held my hair, everybody was pulling on the person, leave her hair. But what they didn't know, in pulling her to leave my hair, that they were now all pulling me. Somebody who saw what was happening, fortunately there was a mechanic walking downstairs that was very strong, a man. Somebody called the mechanic, and the mechanic came with something like those spanner and began to hit their hand. But by then I had left, and I had seen the other world. And as soon as they did that, I came back again. What happened? The courtroom. In that courtroom, it was decided. She has an assignment. The Bible said that no one can harm one. He's on to good work. There were so many cases and arguments that were presented for me. And that's why I know no man that is born of flesh can kill me. It's not possible. Not even now we have come into assignment. Some of us need to understand certain things. That your life is hidden in Christ. That you can't keep yourself one day extra apart from heaven giving you that time and what God has decided concerning you people. Instantly, it took me a while. That shook me. That experience shook me a lot and formed my mind over a lot of things today. Many times we are faced with sudden, this thing we call sudden death. It doesn't happen like that. There is something presented called what? The blood. Once the token of the blood comes, there is a finality to that word, judgment. You can't kill her. This thing happened in a second. Send her back. Help will be done. That's when angels will arrange for a boy to do what? To go and bring the spanner to hit somebody's hand so that you can be alive. If a man died, he did not die because there was no help. He died because the system in place that would have spoken was not in place. There was no voice. The blood has a voice. Amen, somebody. If the blood is speaking for you, the blood will deliver you, even if it's a second before your time or life is over. If you know the relevance of the blood in your life, you would have known that once the blood of Jesus is effective in your life, anyone thinking of what to do with you, even that second, God will take that man away so that he cannot fulfill the devices of his life. Do you know that this God is great and mighty? That before the foundation of the earth, he has already pre released the blood to protect and preserve your life. Like the war over nations, small things. After the Bible said there shall be rumors of war. Don't think the 
there's anything any government or land or nation is doing, or anything going on in your life that is difficult for God? About nothing. Any of us that is experiencing delay, it's just because you've not understood how to release the right things so that God himself will show mercy. Or because God has decided. Because God still has sovereignty to decide. He will, he's the one that will take the final decision. Either way, there is nothing the blood of Jesus cannot do. Absolutely nothing. And I just share this practical experience of what happens in the courtroom. Just opening it up. So you'll be interested in these 30 things because they are real. They are real. How does the courtroom operate? The devil will bring all his charges. All we do is, they are finished speaking. Any defense, do you know that a child of God has no defense? Even if there are 1,001 charges, all you have to plead is, I'm guilty, but, somebody say, but, the blood has paid its what? And once that is declared, even if there are million charges, he strike off immediately. Is somebody following me? No matter what you are guilty of today, no matter what has happened in your life, just at that box, the blood of Jesus has what? Paid it all. Everything is what? Including foundational causes, including all this. Uh, this everything is delayed. And I declare and declare this morning, whatever is harassing your life and destiny, I command it expires in the name of Jesus. 30 things the blood does. Number one. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28. My debt is paid once and for all. My debt is paid once and for all. Paid means paid. And the Bible says, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time. Apart from sin, for what? Salvation. Christ was offered once to bear the sins of what? Many. He will never again be offered. He has finished it. The work he did is perfect. The devil cannot say that what Jesus did for you and for me was inadequate. It's a lie from the pit of hell. It's perfect and it is done. It is finished in Jesus' name. Number two. Number two. I am justified. I am what? Justified. Romans chapter 5 verse 9. I am justified. We are justified. I, I, I had to, you know, give you a picture to see what God, you know, does. Because I remember... Those 21, at that 21, actually that was one of the last major business I did before I came full time in ministry. At that point, the call of God had been strong in my life. And I had made up my mind I was going to serve God. I was going to close my companies and businesses, praise God. And so the enemy knew that and wanted to take me before that time. And he was quick on that. And that's why when I see babies who suffer so much, before meeting the battle starts from the womb, before the child is one year, five years, why is the devil attacking this family? Because the devil wants to see whether he can push you to take the children. You know, if in those days, most prophetic verses, they say that what? Because they'll be seeing visions. If you see visions, if you have a seeing eye, as a child, you're already seeing vision. Because I remember as a child, I would see fire. I would be, shout, I would be telling my mother, Mom, Mom, you're all cool, cool, cool. I would be seeing fire. This was under five years. I was always seeing fire. And then, of course, my mother, with the little she knows, she'll be looking for solution for me. And the plan of the devil of troubling your life is to see if you can be sold out to Satan before your ministry will actually start or to kill you before you can serve him. Even Jesus, how old was he when Herod went out for him? How old was he? He took the angels, even Moses. But hear me today. You cannot be destroyed in Jesus' name. 
because you were justified from the foundation of the world and as soon as you know it no matter how the devil is fighting hard to kill or to destroy your, your destiny declare I am justified declare I am justified you are justified and the devil cannot stop that the Bible says, much more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved through rot, through him. No matter the rot that the devil is trying to bring into your marriage, cause your business to enter into, we have been what? Justified by the blood. Can I hear you believing amen? In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, declare I am justified. In the name of Jesus, I am what? Justified. The third thing that you always have in mind that the blood has released for you. Say, I am forgiven. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. The devil needs to stop accusing you of any abortion you committed before you were saved. Declare, I am forgiven. If you are doing 419 and you are saved, declare, I am forgiven. Don't let the devil come and tell you you cannot have children because you did the abortion. Don't let the devil tell you that it was because of this or that. That is why God cannot bless you. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the richness of his grace. There is grace that is rich, enough to wipe away and cause that sin to be forgiven. And I tell you, he forgives and he forgets forever. Any voice I accusing you and telling you the reason why you are not going forward is because of what that happened and what you did the other time. Tell the devil I am forgiven. Somebody tell the devil I am forgiven in the name of Jesus. Tell the devil I am forgiven in Jesus name. The next thing you should tell the devil, tell the devil I am spared from God's wrath. I am spared from God's wrath. Romans chapter 5 verse 9 you have to know this. I am spared from God's wrath. It says much more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through that. Romans chapter 5 verse 9. Much more than having been what? Justified by the blood. The blood did not only justify us, but we have been saved from what? The wrath. So somebody should not come and tell me tomorrow that the reason why my this or the other is not going or why your business is falling. You know, I see people, they say, mm, um, okay, I know uh, this is not working. That Maybe you have a call. That's why God decided to kill all your children. No, it's not true. Is somebody following me? How will God come and kill five children because he wants to use you? That doesn't sound like what God can do. That's a rot. That's a rot of the devil trying to confuse what God is doing. Praise God. I've seen so many people who come to mountain and when they come, they say they want to start business. Why? Because of the wrath of the devil. No. Somebody declare, I am spared from God's wrath. I am what? Spared from God's wrath. So even if there's a punishment, so long as it's a wrath from God, it will not destroy you. Like the day Moses was at the burning bush. I'm sure that day he did not do anything. And that was how he left that business and followed to do another thing. A call can disconnect you from what you are doing. A call can do what? Disconnect you from where you are going. But a call cannot bring rocks, which is constant destruction and disaster. Is somebody following me? Because constant destruction and disaster is a rot. And God will not bring rot to you. Why? Because you are spared from God's rot in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 5 verse 9 becomes a rot when you cannot take it. Amen. Number 5. Declare I am healed. I am healed. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 25. And as soon as this word comes into your inner man and you receive it. Understand that this is what Jesus has done for you. And receive it in Jesus' name. I am being spiritually healed. One day, even my flesh will be replaced with an incorruptible body. You know, I was just thinking about this resurrected body before I slept last night. Ah, Jesus, I don't know why sometimes I go there. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. I was just thinking about this promise. Do you know that on the resurrection morning, Everybody will have seen eyes. Even crippled that don't walk, their legs will be walking. Everybody will have hands. Somebody, can I hear hallelujah, somebody? Arthritis will be over and over forever in the name of Jesus. Diabetes, high blood pressure, all 
those things are not they say it's incurable but it's a lie the bible says who himself for our sin in his own body on the tree that we having died to sin might live for righteousness and by his stripe you were what healed that means we were healed two thousand years ago declare i am healed before the foundation of the world we were already healed can i hear your amen the problem is in the process and in appropriation. You don't have to wait until the resurrection morning to start enjoying your healing. Amen, somebody. Even as this word is coming, it is where the doubt, the unbelief, and the enemy start his attack. That is as far as our faith is driven. But today, in the name of Jesus Christ, let the remembrance of the work that is finished. First Peter chapter 2, verse 25. So they activate again in the name of our Lord Jesus that we are healed in Jesus' name. We are healed in the name of Jesus. For you we are like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd, shepherd and overseer of our world, souls. Amen. Sometimes I call him the bishop of my soul. That is one assignment God wants to do for every one of us. Amen. Number six, I'm spiritually alive. I'm spiritually what? Alive. Child of God, you are alive. John chapter 6, verse 53. You are alive. Machineke, you don't die. You don't what? Die. By what? Essence, the blood. John chapter 6, verse 53. And Jesus said to them, and Jesus said to them, John chapter 6 verse 53 Jesus said to them most assuredly I say to you unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you John chapter 6 verse 53 Jesus said to them most assuredly I say to you unless you do what eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have what no life in you that tells me that if I eat his flesh and I drink his blood, I have life in me. Put in another way. The life I have today, I receive it as I eat his flesh and I drink his blood, I have life. Amen, somebody in Jesus' name. No wonder Jesus said, do this in the remembrance of me. And when this comes to you, when you are taking the communion, you see it as what? A covenant of life in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody make that declaration. I'm alive in Jesus' name. Declare to the devil, let him hear it. I'm spiritually alive. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hey, somebody declare it. I am spiritually alive. Hallelujah, somebody in Jesus' name. Maybe you came here tired and your body is weak. It's a life from the pit of hell. I declare, nobody is spiritually dead, physically dead. You shall not die. In the name of our Lord Jesus, your mind, your body, your soul, and your spirit is alive, is alert, is awake. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. Declare, I am spiritually alive. Say that to the devil, I'm alive. As soon as you reconnect the covenant and the body and the blood of Jesus, declare according to the word of God, I'm alive. In the name of Jesus, I'm what? Alive. That means when I'm disconnected from the body. Some of us come to take the communion. There's nothing we receive anymore. Because there's nothing going on in our heart. But declare I am alive. Hallelujah, somebody. Hey, as you receive the communion today, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the knowledge of your being alive, especially this season of Advent, comes alive in Jesus' name. I activate the power of resurrection on this altar in the name of our Lord Jesus. We all came alive when he gave up his, his life on the cross. He has changed death for life and we shall not die again. And no child of God dies. You shall not die. I shall not die in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh child of God, come alive. Anyone that is threatened by the spirit of death, I break that covenant in the name of Jesus. We tear the record wherever it is stored in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ written death for you and for your loved ones in the name of
Lord Jesus, we destroy that record. This morning, in the name of our Lord Jesus, I activate life and life in its abundance. In the name of Jesus, I see business come alive. I see marriages come alive. I see hope come alive. I see life come alive. You entered here this morning afraid of death. I declare it is finished. That's what Jesus said on the cross. It is broken. And the Bible said forever in the name of Jesus. It's irreversible in the name of our Lord Jesus. As many who had bad dreams, what is a dream to reality? The word of God is not the child. Hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah somebody. Oh your faith just came alive again in the name of Jesus. Declare I am alive. Declare my daughter is alive. My son is alive. You have somebody who has stroke. Somebody who is sick. Your loved one who is dying. Go give that person communion this morning. Go give that person communion. And declare as you eat the body and the blood of Jesus. You shall not die. I command you come alive in the name of Jesus Christ. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Hope. Thank Just you, Holy Ghost. The name upon Thank you, me. Jesus. Breathe. Oh, is your name? Breathe, Lord. Just breathe the name upon me. Breathe. You can't just pray for your business is coming alive right the now. Name. Everything dying. The name Call it forth. And it shall live in the name of Jesus. Your destiny, your ministry, your career, your calling, we call it to come alive. Your passion, come alive in Jesus' name. Kidneys, liver, every organ that is dying, we command you come alive in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, somebody. Just breathe your life upon me. Jesus, thank you. There's so much going on right here now. Oh, oh the atmosphere. Oh, Jesus. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. From a spirit to spirit, we are lighted by your word. How we the bread of life That's how we come alive That's how we take our place Just breathe the name Just breathe the name upon me Breathe Just breathe the name Just breathe the name upon me Breathe Father we thank of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, you came here weak, you've come alive. There's a very strong anointing here, breaking every yoke right now in the name of Jesus. What are the things that have been accomplished through the blood of Jesus? Number seven, my judgment has been satisfied. And I'm at peace with God. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. The judgment has been satisfied. And as we speak, have your peace with God. He said, but he was wounded for transgression. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement for peace was upon his what? Shoulders. And by his stripes were healed. Number eight, the bloodstream of his people Israel will be purged. Jewel chapter 3 verse 21. The blood has been released for that. That's what his promise is. And today we are joined here. He said, and I will acquit them of the guilt of bloodshed. For whom I have not acquitted. For the Lord dwells in Zion. 
This is powerful. And that's why the Bible says, even the lawful captive shall be what? Delivered. You know that when it comes to blood guilt, by law, the only way you can Reva uh, um, the punishment that is equal is that the one that has shed blood, your own blood must be shed. But the blood of Jesus can acquit a man that is guilty of bloodshed. This should be a powerful revelation for anyone here who has been in occult before. If you have been in occult, you have been involved in shedding blood, and now you cannot sleep. Bring your father, bring your daughter, and you are asking yourself, how can I break this covenant? Joel chapter 3 verse 21 tells you, for I will quit them that have what? Guilty of bloodshed, whom I have not acquitted, for the Lord dwells in where? Zion. I will acquit them of the guilt of bloodshed. And so the only one that has the power to acquit a man that is guilty of bloodshed is who? Jesus through his blood. And that is why any man that wants today to break any covenant with blood, if you truly repent and you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and you submit yourself under his authority and allow the blood to work in your life, there is no condemnation upon and unto him who is in Christ Jesus. The problem we have today is that we have Christians who just come and take altar call. They don't sit down and to study and to receive the revelation that will cause them to be free. Because if you know this, no matter what comes against you, you should know you are freed by the blood. Amen. Declare, I am cleansed by the blood. First John chapter 1 verse 7 says, I am what? Cleansed by the blood. The book of First John chapter 1 verse 7. This is also one of my very favorite scriptures. He said, but if we walk in the light, as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all our sin. So that means that as you are walking in the light, the blood of Jesus is also cleansing you as you are walking. Can I hear you? Amen. As you are walking in the light, as you are obeying God, as you are walking, as you are living your life, maybe unconsciously and unknowingly, you committed something, you did something wrong. While you are on that assignment, God is also cleansing you. Why do I say that? If we recognize the heavy responsibility that it takes you to hold this mic and to stand here and minister to the people of God, many people take it as a light duty. And that's why somebody can come and say, I prophesy. And God said what God did not say. If God was to take out his rocks, while you are talking, you're already dead. If you look at the high priest, that entered only once a year. When they came into the Holy of Holies, they would tie a rope just in case that the blood that they're taking is not received. In case they do not carry out the ordinances as God has said. We today, the blood has given us access into the very presence of God. Therefore, we stand on the altar because the blood is there, cleansing us of our righteousness. And that's how come you can see a minister lying and lying using and usurping but you wonder why are they still moving why is she alive why is he still not dead because the blood of jesus is at work the blood of jesus is what at work it is true there is a light of grace but that one may be a weakness and jesus is like begging the father you know he's my son he's my servant he does evangelism you know he loves me he does my work, but he just has weakness with money. He, he, you know, this church money he's stealing is his weakness. Just, just forgive him, just forgive him. And as he continues to intercede, you see the man is walking up and down, thinking that God is not seeing what he's doing. God is saying it, but it's just the blood of Jesus. Cleansing is a continuous process. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all, not some, all. Oh, why is it that 
we are misbehaving so much on the altar and we are not dying like like uh, uh, Uzzah, like uh, Rabu and those prophets that were streaking the blood of Jesus is cleansing us. Amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Amen in Jesus name. Now, we have the power to overcome the enemy by the blood. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Why are we so powerfully anointed? Why is our life like we know that, oh, I, I, I just pray that you know how the enemy is afraid of you. Because a child of God who has this revelation cannot be overcome. Why? The Bible said, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they did not love themselves unto death. That is the reason. How do you overcome Satan? The only key that is released, the only power that is given to you that can overcome the devil is what? The blood. The blood of Jesus. That is the power that overcome the devil. That is the power. 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 It is by this power. This is the only power. There is no other power. There is no other power that can overcome the devil. Except the blood of Jesus. That is the power that can overcome addiction. The power that can overcome sickness. The power that can overcome death. The power that can overcome your failure. And the word of our testimony. Many times the blood is working, but we are saying a different thing. How are you? I am dying. The blood is saying you have come alive, but we are saying what? I am dying. So if you understand how the word and the blood work together, you will start to bring the word and what? The blood together. And the Bible said they have not loved themselves unto death. What does that mean? What does it mean to love yourself unto death? Sometimes our will to do what we want is so strong that we would rather do what we want and do it unto death. But if today you can allow the will of God over your life, now you say, it's not what I want God, but what do you want for me? I will not do what I want and die in it, God. I will obey you. Find the scripture, confess it, add it to the blood, and you shall become an overcomer in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare and prophesy, anyone under the sound of my voice, you are molested by marine kingdom. You are being overcome by your ancestral world. There are some satanic gang up, altars that are fighting you. I decree and declare, in the name of our Lord Jesus, by the token of the blood of Jesus, we address every human sacrifice, blood that is shed on any altar, concerning any life or any destiny today. We decree and declare in the name of our Lord Jesus, let every voice on every altar, let them be silenced in the name of Jesus. Let every man become a liar. Let Jesus become true today in your life in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare, no matter how simple that you are in your heart, no matter how little you understand, but I stand with you in faith in the name of Jesus to address the token, the totem, the evil altars, the pronouncement, ordinances against your life in Jesus' name. I decree and declare today, we cut them down, we pull them down, we tear them in the name of Jesus, we set them ablaze by the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of our Lord Jesus. We silence every voice that is speaking against your life. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we release the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. We release the power in the voice of the blood of Jesus Christ. We release the power in the voice of the blood of Jesus. We decree and declare that the blood that speaks at better things begin to speak for you, begin to speak for your family, begin to speak for your children, begin to speak for your household. I decree and declare you are an overcomer in the name of our Lord Jesus who raised the standard of the Holy Ghost above every standard of the enemy we begin to cancel every evil report name of our Lord Jesus, every wicked ordination, we cancel it in Jesus' name. I keep hearing evil reports, evil reports, evil reports. 
we destroy it in the name of Jesus and we set it in place in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ I declare liberty freedom all over this altar in Jesus name mommy water did not create you I say marine kingdom cannot have you somebody dedicated you there somebody declare I have come of age now liberate yourself begin to denounce every covenant that you were initiated into by the token of the blood of Jesus you separate yourself from that wicked covenant Colossians 1 20 says by the blood all things are reconciled declare today this season of holy week I reconcile myself with the altar of the living God I forsake every altar that is a hidden altar altar of foreign gods I separate myself from those all evil altar in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ I am of age I choose to serve the living God I believe in the cross and I confess and decree and declare in the name of our Lord Jesus by faith this morning according to your word father you said without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin I stand here today to confess and to repent of ancestral sin sin of my father's house sin of my mother's house sins I have committed oh God God have mercy. Forgive me in Jesus name. I repent from ashes and today I confess and I ask you Father have mercy O God and forgive me of my initiation of the covenants I have entered into. Today I know that even the lawful captive can be set free and I confess today. I denounce all altars, all covenants that I have handed my life to. I declare and declare today in Jesus name all those truths that I have committed my life to that are disturbing me I know the power in the blood of Jesus and today I command in Jesus name all those evil thrones that are disturbing me catch fire in the name of Jesus Christ I separate myself from all that evil from all that wickedness that has been speaking from my foundations in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ oh God I reach out to the cross today I identify with the Calvary in the name of Jesus today I identify with the cross in the name of our Lord Jesus today I receive the work that has been finished on Calvary in the name of Jesus Christ and by evidence of the blood the Bible said I overcome the enemy by the blood of I make my confessions together as a witness and the Bible said not having loved myself unto death I come out of every evil covenant and I step into glory this morning in the name of Jesus Christ now begin to plead the blood of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus. Something is going on right now. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Plead the power and the pressure of blood of Jesus. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Plead the power and the pressure of blood of Jesus. Yokes are breaking. Yokes are breaking. Chains are melting. In the name of Jesus. Metals are melting. Bottles are shattering. Evil mirrors are shattering in the name of Jesus. You established authority. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, the righteous. There is power in the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus that is weighing us down. But I have to go faster now because I'm just getting into number 11 and our time is up. I'm going to go faster right now. Just understand where you are because as we speak, many people's position have just changed. Now stay in that position that you have entered into. One that is released, one that has overcome. Can I hear you believing in a man? Hallelujah, somebody. I just see people climbing steps. Just, I just see elevation. Thank you, Jesus. I see people lifting. Show the lift coming out of, the of pit. my head. Coming out of the pit. Come out of that pit right now in Jesus' name. I just see people You're lifting. my glory. There's an ascension the going on. Reconnecting. Reconnection. Reconnection. Reconnection to your Bible study. Reconnection to your oh fasting Lord. life. Reconnection to your 
their prayer life. Reconnection to their relationship with God. Reconnection to their fellowship. Thank you, Jesus. You're my glory. Thank you, Jesus. Reconnection to revelation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Just raise up your hands wherever you are. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just thank him for what is going on right now? Thank you, Jesus. 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 Something is going on and I'm going to stop here. Thank you, Jesus. God is taking over. He's walking. He's walking. Can you pray right now? Can you pray right now? Just pray. You can offer your prayer, your thanksgiving. You know, just talk to God this morning. In the name of Jesus, talk to God. Father, we bless your holy name. We honor you. And we sanctify your presence here this morning in Jesus' name.